Hello and welcome everyone. So delighted to have all of you here. It's fun seeing familiar names and it's also great seeing new names. So today our conversation is on group or team coaching. We have a quick 30 minutes on this topic. And yes, uh, one of the questions I often get asked is, are you gonna have access to this information later? Absolutely. We will send you a link to the recording afterwards. And when I send you the link to the recording, there's something else that will be there for you too. So let's dive in. What are we going to talk about? Our agenda for the conversation today. We'll talk about when does group or team coaching make sense? What is the impact of group or team coaching? What are the benefits of group or team coaching? We'll go through definitions of a group versus a team. We'll talk about a facilitator, a trainer, and a coach. So understanding what each of those are. Then we're gonna give you some specific tips and techniques for results. Of course, we'll share resources with you and have time for additional Q&A. During the conversation, if you have questions, and some of you submitted things ahead of time, I think we did a good job building uh, the pertinent questions into what we're going to cover. Uh, for those of you that had questions on other topics, I'm happy to connect with you at the end. Uh, when I send you uh, the link to the recording, I'm going to include, hey, if you want to schedule time for a one-on-one -on -one call, you can do that, and I'll give you how to do that in that email. So you can watch for that. So throughout the conversation. If you have a question related to this group or team coaching topic, please type it in the question panel. Or if you want, raise your hand. It's really fun when somebody is brave and raises their hand and comes in live. Because uh, if you raise your hand, I'll unmute you and you can ask your question live. So awesome. All right. Let's dive in. When does it make sense? Um, to me, of course, my gut reaction is to say all the time. <laughs> it's just a great tool. So it makes sense as a benefit for clients. So if you think about it this way, in the workplace, when you have a team, it's a huge benefit to that team to have a coach working with them, whether it's working on their relationships and how they work with each other, or it's because they're working on a particular project, a group coach or a team coach can totally empower uh, their results, their outcomes. Now, the, we'll talk about definitions for a group coach. For now, let me start with an example. Sometimes you'll have somebody that does career coaching. That's a great opportunity for doing group sessions because the individuals are all working on their career and they have a chance to learn from each other. It's also very cost effective for them. So they get the information, they get the coaching, and they learn from each other. Fabulous benefits. It's an additional service for you as a coach. So if you're coaching and you've, you've done your training, some of you, and I recognize the names, have done your initial training, the professional coach. So you're moving toward that. For those of you that have completed training, you've done your master coach, you're part of the ICF, that kind of thing. Uh, you've experienced the group or team coaching in class. It's a fabulous add-on. I'm doing a, a master coach class right now, and people say, wow, I hadn't really thought about this as a tool or a resource. And I'm hearing that from internal coaches, and I'm hearing that from external coaches. It's a fabulous opportunity for you as a coach and a tremendous business builder. Now, it's also, uh, as a business builder, something that you can put in a package. So for example, and again, it'll vary depending on the type of coaching you do, offering a package to somebody where they have one group session and one individual session each month is awesome because it gives them the individual attention that really enhances what they're doing and it gives them that the wealth of insight from a group of people and it keeps it affordable it makes it very manageable for you as well it's a, a great opportunity to further expand what you're doing it makes sense because it will increase team and individual results it makes sense because it supports achievement of goals and objectives, whether those are individual or for a team, for example. And it will enhance engagement and productivity in the workplace because it enhances the interactions everybody has. Let's look at some of the research. So this is one of the studies that were done. Here's some of what came out of it. They said with that coaching, 
you had improvement in relationships with direct reports of 77% of the time people said, yeah, that improved my relationship there. 71% of the time individuals said it helped them improve their relationship with their immediate supervisor. With peers, 63% of the time and with clients, 37% of the time. So that's exciting. Now, in terms of increasing uh, teamwork, 67% of the time, uh, big improvement there. Job satisfaction went up 61% of the time. Organizational commitment, a 44% improvement. That's phenomenal. If we could get that everywhere, can you imagine? Uh, the productivity is up 53% with that coaching. The quality of the work is up 48%. Organizational strength is increased 48% profitability increased 22%. These numbers are absolutely amazing. And I love this one. Coaching reduces customer complaints. We're not even working with customers. We're working with people taking care of the customers and it has that kind of impact. So these are studies that are out there. You can go out and find them and read more detail on what they're measuring. What are the benefits of group or team coaching? very specifically, it taps into an effective, proven method for long-term development. You've all seen the average ROI in coaching is 600%. Take that into a group or a team environment. It's a fabulous tool. It's a great way to navigate change in a collaborative way. And if you think about this, there's conversation about the VUCA world, volatile, uncertain, <laughs> changing. We've, we've got all of that going on. There's so much happening and happening so fast that when you give a, people a chance to talk about it and work through how they're approaching it, it just makes sense that you're going to get a better result. And of course, the economy of scale. So instead of working with one person at a time, the opportunity to work with an entire group, it serves you as a coach, it serves your, your clients because of the economy of scale for them too. More benefits of group and team coaching, skill enhancement. So when you think about individual coaching, we know that's one of the intentions of individual coaching to enhance our skills. The same applies when you're talking group or team coaching. The skills of the people involved go up. And sometimes it's quite simply the coach is modeling effective people and communication skills and the people in the group or on the team observe that, experience that, and start adopting some of those skills. Other times it's because it's intentional. They're saying, okay, what are the skills that are gonna make a difference for us? And they start working on those in particular. So it happens in many, many different ways. It's also really great for resource identification. Chances are you've all had an experience like this. Somebody working in a company and somebody in a different area of the company is looking for something, wants something, is going to benefit from someone, something, and they have no clue it's available to them. When you start bringing people together in a group or in, an, in a team environment, they start saying, oh, yeah, well, I know where to get that. Hey, I know where that resource is. And all of a sudden, they're going, oh, these things are here. We do have them available. So it's the communication. It's also a powerful tool for creating best practices, whether it's best practices for an individual uh, who is seeking a job or a different job, a career change or a new career. It is a great opportunity in a team environment to develop best practices. You also have groups inside of companies where even though they're working on different things individually, they're caught in common. So for example, a leadership group. And that leadership group is going to start developing best practices out of their conversation, taking the input from everybody, learning from each other. So it's fabulous. It empowers everybody there to learn from each other. It engages all of them to the benefit of everyone there. And of course, it enhances individual growth. So hopefully you're all getting as excited about group or team coaching and the potential of it as I am. So let's figure out what's the difference. So a group is multiple individuals whose personal goals are in alignment. 
So here's the example. If I'm a coach and I say, oh yeah, I'm going to add group coaching and I'm gonna start scheduling group coaching sessions. And I set up a group and maybe one person is going through a divorce and another one's getting a new job and a different one's running a small business uh, and a different one's transitioning into the, the retirement phase of life. Is that a group? Mm -mm, no, <laughs> they're in completely different places. So when you think about putting together a group in your individual coaching business, think about the people in the group having similar objectives. So a group for small business owners, fabulous. A group for people changing jobs or looking for a job, fabulous. They all have a common interest. In the workplace, I mentioned the example of a group of people developing as leaders and future leaders. That's a great one. So those are examples of what a group is. In terms of a team, a team is people that are working together, uh, sometimes within an organization. They're all employees and they're on the same work team. Sometimes you will have different organizations bringing people into this team. Uh, Think of this one, a United Way campaign. You'll have people from different companies and they're working together on that fundraising objective. Uh, other times, and, and I think this one's fabulous, I love it when a company brings in vendors and clients. And so they put a team together working on something that's going to serve all of them. And you get a lot of rich perspective in that one. So definitely an opportunity in, in terms of what's going on. So now let's start defining some of the different professionals who are serving a group or a team. A trainer is somebody who comes in and teaches a particular skill or type of behavior. So what they do is they start out by identifying what are the objectives. Then they develop, they create the program, the teaching that they're going to do, and they deliver that training program. They evaluate the skill level of the individuals in that group or team, and then as appropriate, provide additional training. Now, a great thing to be aware of for all of us who do coaching is that for trainers, coaching is actually considered a core competency. And the reason for that is because coaching skills enhance the actual training session. So, Good to know on that one. The same, by the way, is true of facilitators. So what is a facilitator? A facilitator has an outcome in mind when they come in and their job is to move the group or the team toward that outcome. And they do it by providing indirect or unobtrusive assistance, guidance, or supervision. So it's about the process to get them to that specific objective. They know the end goal when they start. They manage the group. They give options to move forward. And they make sure the group is working together for the defined objective. How is that different from coaching? A coach is defined as a partner. Now, this is huge because when we think of a trainer, and we think of a facilitator, they're the expert. We bring them in and they're in that position of power and control, if you will, and they are the expert. A coach is not. They are there as a partner and it's truly a partnership. It is the coach's responsibility to empower clients so that the client, the people in the group or the team, clarify their own goals. It is the client the people in the group or team that create their own action plans. They figure out how they will move past obstacles and they achieve what they choose. That's a significant difference. The coach being there as a partner and truly empowering the people in the room. So how do they do that? They use questioning to create awareness and explore. Those of you who have done coach training, remember, Coaching questions are completely different than any other type of question. And using that positive, proactive language in the questions, keeping them short and simple, open and truly open to whatever the possibility is. We talk about as coaches, when a client comes up with a solution that totally surprises us, we know it was a fabulous session because that's where we come in. We are there to empower them.
We provide the positive support and encouragement. We're on their side. We talk about being an accountability partner. Well, an accountability partner is also going to acknowledge progress and success and take time for that. A coach is going to maintain the focus on the future and on achieving goals. Think about it this way. <laughs> if you think about group think or kind of thing, when you have a group or a team and there's a problem and something's gone wrong, it's so easy for that group or team to get stuck. And the conversation just stays in what the problem is and who said what or did what. Well, what's a coach going to do? A coach is going to maintain that focus on, okay, wherever you're at, where do you want to go? How are you going to get there and move them forward and towards what they want? The coach E, in other words, the people in the group and the team are the ones that ultimately choose the objectives, what they want to achieve, what they want to accomplish in this particular session, and they choose their own actions. So what are some of the tips and the techniques to really get results? So let's talk about it. First off, you got to decide who's going to be there. Now, an interesting question often comes up in the workplace here. People say, okay, if I'm going to work with a group or a team in the workplace, uh, is the boss there? And sometimes the answer is having the boss there is a really good thing. And sometimes the answer is having the boss there is a really bad thing. It depends. It depends on their relationships. It depends on the dynamics. It depends on how open everyone is. Sometimes a coach will coach a boss individually until they're ready to be part of that group or until the group is ready to be part, have the boss be part of it. Sometimes it takes really opening the boss up to having the conversation with others and really accepting their feedback and doing something about it. And that may or may not happen. Now, alternatively, you will have bosses that people love. They say, oh, this is a great boss. I love my boss. And in a case like that, having the boss there is fabulous because, yeah, the boss will add ideas and people know they can add ideas too. And they know the boss is on their side. So whether or not you want the boss, that's one of the big questions that comes up. The answer is it's a gray area. It, just depends. So explore that and explore it to make sure it's really serving everybody. Now, common interests. If it's a group, we gave the example of make sure they all have something they care about uh, in common. So there's a way they relate. They have uh, things they're talking about that serve everybody there. You want to make sure uh, with a team in particular, what's the common focus? So we talk about sometimes the focus is on completing a particular project. Sometimes the focus is on them all working together more effectively or interacting more effectively with other teams in the organization. So whatever that focus is, hash that out. Now, what's really interesting is that one of the mistakes coaches make is failing to spend enough time on defining interest and focus, really figuring out what people want, how they're going to know they got it. The time there is actually half the conversation because once they're really clear on what they want, the rest of it comes easy. It's taking time to get clear on what it is they want. I often get asked how many people so the International Coach Federation defines a group as being three to five people. Uh, I have found a sweet spot tends to be in the five to 12 range in terms of numbers. Five to 12 people gives you the greatest opportunity for a rich conversation and discussion, everybody being able to participate. Uh, when you have at least three, you can get started, and that can be a really good conversation. It takes more skill on the part of the coach uh, to fully engage them. When you start moving toward 15, it's a lot of people to manage. So you really got to be cognizant of time and how much time there is for each person. More. When you think about planning your session, one option is for you to decide on topics. And then a different option is that that decision be handled by the group or the team. So a couple of examples for this. Uh, if you have a coach that is brought into a company, oftentimes the company who's the sponsor 
in that relationship has specific objectives in mind. Hey, this is what we want to accomplish. And there's some work coordinating what's going to be covered in the coaching sessions. And so in a case like that, it's being pre-selected. The challenge there for the coach is to effectively engage the people in that team in terms of owning what the topic is. Hey, this is what the company wants talked about and addressed. What's your reaction to that? What do you want to do with that? How do you want to engage with that topic or disengage from that topic? Because ultimately it's the client who's choosing. Now, a different possibility, a different example for you, I mentioned career coaching as one. It may be that I'm a career coach and I work with a lot of individuals. So I say, okay, I'm going to do a series of sessions for people that can come in and join. The first session is going to be maintaining your confidence while you're in the job search process. Uh, I'm going to do a session on resume writing. I'm going to do a session on interviewing. We're going to do a session on negotiating. We're going to do a session on job search strategies whatever it is, and you develop a series of different topics based on what's going to make sense. And then that's what you're marketing. That's what you're offering to your client base and, and others who are potentially looking for a coach. And the way they engage with the topic is they say, yeah, I want to participate. That, that works for me. And they decide to sign up for those group sessions. So those are examples of pre-selected topics. Now, if you want to move to deciding with the group or team, there's a couple different approaches there. One possibility is you literally show up and say, okay, what does everybody want to talk about? Uh, a great example for that is a mastermind type group or team. So if you have a lot of small business owners that you work with, them coming together in a mastermind session, they can say, hey, here's what's going on for me right now. I want to talk about it and, and whatever else people bring up and then they decide where they're going to go. A different type of approach to that deciding on what they're going to talk about is when uh, you do an advanced survey. So for example, using a tool like SurveyMonkey and sending it out to everybody that's in the group and saying, hey, here are possible topics, what other topics, what do you want to talk about? And you have them vote and rank and you have them pre-select the topic based on that survey that goes out to them. So you've got choices as far as how the agenda is being created. The other consideration for you is, do you want to prepare with questions ahead of time or do you want it to be a free flowing session? And it's an interesting mix. Sometimes it's helpful to have some questions that you send out and everybody says, okay, this is what we're going to talk about. It gets them thinking and working on those questions and they come in and it's a rich conversation. And other times what can happen, and I've seen this happen, is we get too prepared and then we get too invested in our own plan. So we go in and, oh, no, you can't talk about that. You got to answer this question. Oh, we're going to run out of time. We're not going to get through my questions. <laughs> and then you get stuck and it doesn't have the value it has when you really give them the control. So a happy balance between those two is if you know what the topic is ahead of time, having a few questions to help to get it going uh, that are go-to for you. And then truly being ready in the moment, where are we gonna go? What if it changes? What if they wanna go a different direction? So having that flexibility is an ideal. In terms of where the group or team meets, what's really interesting is how often people have this idea that, oh, if it's a group or a team session, you're gonna all be in the same room. Well, that may or may not happen. So. Sometimes it's with an online technology. So think about this. If I set this webinar up where all of you are unmuted and we all see the list of names and we start having a conversation, I can even set it up where we turn on our webcams if we want. We can have a group session right here in GoToWebinar. And there are dozens of technologies that you can use for having an online session. When we do the master coach class, we actually have every coach pick a different technology specifically so that people experience different technologies and what some of the pros and cons are for choosing a technology. So that's a possibility. A different one is a conference call. 
Now, with global teams in more and more organizations, these choices make so much sense. A conference call can be done on Skype. There are other options, uh, freeconferencecall.com, et cetera, where people can call in and you can have a group on that call, uh, the online technologies that we talked about. And these are fabulous options when you have people on the team or in a group that are in diverse locations. Face-to-face -face is an option. For example, if I go back to our career coaching idea, if I have a lot of people in the same community uh, that I'm working with, that can be a great opportunity too. So there's pros and cons to each of these possibilities. It's thinking them through ahead of time and preparing for them ahead of time. Managing the time for the group or team is one of your challenges. And then, of course, applying your coaching competencies. For those of you who have done training, you say, okay, I get the competencies in an individual session. What about in a group? Guess what they apply? So let's talk about it. Time. How do you? effectively manage time in a group or team session. First off, determine what the session objectives are with the group or the team. Determine how they want to have the conversation. Hey, is this going to be a brainstorming session? Is it going to be mini coaching? Is it going to be everybody uh, addressing certain questions? How are you going to handle it? Determine how much time they want to put into each topic. And if the team or the group is unsure on that, then as a coach, be thinking, okay, if they're going to talk about three different things, we have this much time, this one's more important, is start having a sense of what amount of time is going to make sense. And then you check with the group or the team as you move through the conversation. Is this serving you? Do we want to stay here? When are you ready to move on? And you check with them. And as appropriate, you move the conversation forward so that you are moving through all of the objectives. In terms of the coaching competencies and applying those, well, ethics is one of our competencies, and a big one is confidentiality. Have a conversation with the group and team. Hey, how are we going to manage confidentiality here? What's our commitment to that as a group or a team? The agreement itself, knowing and in coaching, we yeah, we have a written agreement, everyone. We also, every single session, have an agreement of what do you want to accomplish? How are you going to know you achieved that? So empowering them with the choice in terms of what's going to happen with the coaching session and how it's being used. Trust and intimacy, creating a safe space so people can openly have the conversation. Now, of course, depending on the dynamics of the individuals, people may or may not be holding back. It depends on their comfort level with the others because as a coach, can I control someone else? No. So we can talk about confidentiality. We can set that up. Be aware that the dynamics of the different personalities are still going to be a factor for people deciding how much they're going to share. As a coach, just as you do in an individual session, dance in the moment. Go with what's working for them. Truly listen to what's being said. And rephrasing helps everybody in the group or on the team. Because sometimes they caught what the person said and sometimes they didn't. And for the person speaking, it adds to the clarity. Keep your questions short, simple, and open just like you do in a coaching session. Use clear, direct language that is succinct and respectful and it demonstrates your belief in their abilities. Create awareness in the group or the team through the exploration. Support them to empowering ownership of whatever actions they're deciding on. Support them to truly engage in the process and what's going on. And invite them. How do you all want to manage accountability and how do you want to celebrate successes? Our competencies apply with a group or a team just as they do with individuals. Okay, resources for you very quickly. Of course, the International Coach Federation, the Center for Coaching Certification, and the Center for Coaching Solutions. The International Coach Federation is the gold standard in coaching. Being a member of the International Coach Federation is really a minimum for saying, yeah, I'm a coach and putting yourself out there. And above and beyond that, they offer credentialing. 
Center for Coaching Certification is a resource for coach training and getting the training for a membership in the ICF. Plus, if you want to move toward credentialing, that's available. We also have the Center for Coaching Solutions. So if you are looking for a coach, if you are looking for support for your coaching program or internal training at your organization, these are all available to you. Of course, for consistently putting out information, we have a blog with new articles every week. We publish a book every year that chapters are written by graduates, and there is fabulous expertise available in these books. Check them out. They're all on Amazon. And then the webinars, just like this one that we had. We do want to be available to you for a quick call or email to support you in getting questions answered. We're available for outsourcing of coaching programs, training, and coaching. And... Last thing, what now? I mentioned that when I send you the email with the link to the recording for this, I'll give you, hey, if you want to schedule a 30-minute conversation, let me know. I'll send you a link to my calendar. You can pick a time that works for you, and we will schedule that. For yourself, what is your action plan now? Are you going to go back and relook at training materials? How are you intentionally applying your skills as a coach? Are you going to finish coach training and move on toward what you want to achieve? Are you going to engage a coach? Are you looking for support? So whatever it is, determine what your actions are. I want to let you know I am going to hang around for any additional questions all of you have. I also want to say thank you to all of you for being here. I appreciate your time and energy. So glad this was helpful. I'm getting comments in the question box. So I appreciate that. Thank you as well. Good, good to hear that it was helpful to you. And for those of you that are still here, what additional questions do you have? And you can type those in in the question panel. You can also, of course, raise your hand if you want to come on live. Um, and what I'm seeing, just so all of you know, I'm really just getting the thank yous and, and that it was good information and helpful to you. So I'm glad to know that. Uh, it seems like we've covered the questions you had. Do feel free to reach out offline if you want to talk individually. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Have a fabulous weekend. Take care.